So here's Gary. Gary is a geneticist that just figured out a technique to bring back a numerous amount of extinct species. But should he? See, that's an interesting question which is being proposed. As technology trudges forward, we are presented with many questions on whether or not we should take particular actions. For example, what are the positives and negatives of this technology and what is its intended purpose? This is where many factors come into play, majorly ethics. Where is the point that we draw a line and figure out whether or not we should bring back an extinct animal through genetic technology? G'day ladies and gentlemen, I'm your host and today's video is definitely more on the unique side, where I'll go through some of science's latest advancements with genetic technology and the debate surrounding it. So for those of you that aren't familiar, a company known as Colossal Bioscience, which was founded by Harvard, have made it their goal to use advanced genetic techniques to de-extinct and restore endangered or extinct species. Their work is based on advances in genetic editing such as CRISPR technology to modify the DNA of living animals to include genes from extinct species. The hope is by introducing these genetic traits, they can create animals with characteristics of extinct species and potentially restore ecosystems and combat climate change. Now on their priority list of bringing back creatures, we have the mammoth, the thylacine and the dodo. Let's kick it off with the most anticipated creature on the list, this being the mammoth. Now, the woolly mammoth is a top priority animal to be resurrected due to the goal the company has for it. This hairy elephant has a whole 10 goals surrounding it. The main of these is to decrease the melting rate of the Arctic permafrost, to prevent the emission of greenhouse gases trapped within the permafrost layer, which is up to 600 million tons of net carbon annually, and to revert overshrubbed forests back into Arctic grasslands, which would help with carbon emissions. Now clearly this would greatly help the Arctic regions, as when you take a look at places such as Northern Russia, they lack that hefty animal to clear out the shrubland. I mean, as early as 2023, they have been importing bisons to try combat environmental issues. So why not cut out the middleman entirely and bring the mammoth back? Then we have the thylacine, an animal that went from over 5,000 members to zero in just a few decades. Now these marsupials were the apex of the Australian landscape, which were integral for maintaining both Australia's ecosystem and habitat. I mean, I suppose it's lucky that the dingo was able to replace them, but they aren't natural to Australia's ecosystem, and hence the thylacine will be a far greater apex predator to have in its place. Colossal bioscience makes it clear that the loss of the thylacine caused trophic downgrading, which is the degradation that occurs when an apex predator is removed from the ecosystem. This includes the proliferation of disease such as the facial tumors seen in the Tasmanian devils, increased wildfires, decreased carbon sequestration, growth of invasive species, and disruption of biogeochemical cycles. So in my opinion, the evidence is slammed down heavier than a T-Rex on Thanksgiving. Australia would benefit from the return of this unique predator. And then we have the infamous dodo, home to the island of Mauritius, the mythical creature that was outcompeted by rats, goats, pigs, deers, as well as being hunted by humans. We can't forget that the dodo is the face of man-made extinction, a creature whose resurrection would drive further action to restore the island's ecosystem through ridding it of invasive species that dealt a heavy hand in making it, along with many other creatures, extinct in the first place. So we have these three established, although let's delve a little bit deeper. What are the exact positives and negatives of this technology? Well, as we've established, there are a number of theoretical positives that could come from bringing back these extinct animals. Ecological restoration is a major area in which these extinct animals could improve. For example, the mammoth would assist in restoring the shrublands to combat climate change. Or we look at the thylacine, which would stabilize populations of prey, as well as chase out invasive dogs, cats, and foxes, which would again assist in native populations to recover. Furthermore, Resurrecting these animals would provide economic benefits to the area. If we take a look at the Dodo's home island, imagine how much tourism would be attracted to the area. This would undoubtedly improve the island's economy and help the well-being of both the people as well as help funding more research into protecting these animals. It's also us righting the wrongs of our past. There have been numerous species which have been wiped out from the planet due to simple human greed, something which shouldn't have happened in the first place. Some would even argue that these animals don't bring about massive changes to the planet, but they didn't deserve to be wiped out in the first place, and hence it's up to us to bring them back. But what are the negatives? 
Well, there is massive ethical concern about committing to this research. As Ian Malcolm once said, your scientists were so preoccupied with whether or not they could, they didn't stop to think if they should. De-extinction efforts involve creating and raising animals in captivity, which can raise questions about the welfare and treatment of these animals. Considerations include the quality of life for these resurrected species and the potential of suffering during the process. As well as this, we don't necessarily know how all these creatures behaved. So when raising one, how do you teach it to do the things a dodo would do? How do we know this? Do we just assume a mammoth would behave similar to an elephant? What about the thylacine? There's lots of questions whether or not this behavior is a topic of nurture versus nature. Additionally, some argue that the resources required for these de-extinction projects could be better spent on conserving and protecting currently endangered species and their habitats. I mean, think about it. Are people going to want to invest in, let's say, protecting an elephant or to recreate an ancient mammoth? This leads to a question on whether or not de-extinction diverts resources from more urgent conservation efforts. There's also the fact that if species went extinct partially due to invasive species, such as the dodo, then those problems need to be fixed before reintroducing these resurrected species into the environment. There's no point of resurrecting them and then placing them only just for them to be outcompeted again. There's also the fact of how sequencing works. What I mean by this is you're gonna need multiple sequences of DNA in order to be able to make multiple mammoths. If we just clone the same mammoth from the same piece of DNA, then the inbreeding on that mammoth is gonna be severe, far worse than the cheaters and whatnot of today. Not only do we have to go through the process of sequencing an individual's DNA, but you're gonna to have to need multiple DNAs or have the technology to be able to alter that DNA in order to make inbreeding not an issue. The complexity and novelty of de-extinction poses ethical uncertainties as the long-term consequences of these efforts are difficult to predict with any certainty. And with this uncertainty, ethical concerns rise. We also have to understand that even if we resurrect some of these species, they aren't actually perfect clones. Let's take a look at the mammoth. In their plan, they establish that they need to sequence both woolly mammoth and Asian elephant genomes, and then figure out the genes which make the mammoth adapted to cold climates. This is where they would then edit the genes in the Asian elephant and fuse it to an elephant egg. So is this a mammoth or just a hairy elephant? This is a similar plan where the best suited relative is determined before genomes are sequenced and edited before being inserted. And all right, let's just wipe the board. Even if we clear these ethical issues, a whole new set of ethical issues comes along when you go further into the process. For example, what animals deserve to be resurrected? How do we rank them? Are we resurrecting them for their purpose or is it for economic growth? How do we protect the animals from trophy hunting? Because there's surely going to be a lot of that going around. At what point in time does human made extinction get cut off? See, there's just too many questions to be asked. And finally, taking this step would be the equivalent of making atomic energy. Once it's carried out to completion, Pandora's box is open and there's no closing it. So what's next? Well, it does seem that we're on our way to resurrecting many of the Earth's extinct animals. What do I think? Well, it's definitely a bit of a sticky situation with many ethical considerations to be taken. I mean, is it right for us to be playing God in the first place? Tell me what you think. And we've reached the end of the video. What do you all think about this technology being used to resurrect species? Do you think we should or shouldn't take this next step? As always, I hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll catch you all next time. See ya.